Hi, everyone. Greetings and welcome to the 2020 Helen Hayes Awards virtual celebration. Thank you for joining with us here tonight from wherever you are. In addition to the nominees here in this virtual room, we have a whole community room filled with friends, family, colleagues, and the greater Washington theater community that wanted to be present and support these nominees at this time. Let's get away from all of them. Yay! Get them all. Wow. Wow. <laughs> My mom, where's she at? Hey, community room. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This unprecedented time has us all looking to connect in different ways. I'm now going to introduce Amy Austin, the president and CEO of Theater Washington, to share a greeting and a message to the community. Hello, everyone. My name is Amy Austin, she, hers, and welcome to the 36th annual Helen Hayes Awards. This is the first of seven nights of individual award nominations over the next two weeks, followed by a culminating video on September 25th at 7 p.m. The Helen Hayes Awards are being presented virtually during an unprecedented time when the theater community is suffering from the loss of performance in theaters, the loss of work, particularly for independent theater makers, and the loss of jobs and institutions. And during this time, we want to affirm the heightened need for equity, anti-racism, and anti-oppression in our theater institutions and for our Black, Indigenous, and people of color artists. We recognize the need for change, and the need for change is not new, but long overdue. The way forward is one that requires learning and listening, and simply trusting that those who are the most harmed by oppression and any in equity know exactly what changes need to happen. Now is the time to really listen and support each other in making the very changes that too many have been asking for for too long. While we, can while we take the time to celebrate the collective and collaborative work of the community, we want to thank the generous foundations, individuals, and sponsors who have supported the Helen Hayes Awards. We're celebrating for the first time without, without our longtime board chair, theater booster and lover, Victor Shargai. We thank Craig Pascal, Victor's husband, and the family of Victor Shargai, Eric and Heidi Muskoff, Frida Evan, Sarah Zing Eisenberg, and Sandy Hathaway. Thanks to our community celebration sponsor, Andrew R. Ammerman. Thanks to our honorary chair, Monty Hoffman. And thanks to John and Meg Hauge, the Share Fund, Scott Abelman and Debbie Schrager, Bosser Broerman Group, Alan Savada and Will Stevenson, Michael Burke and Carl Smith, and the Office of Cable Television and Music in the District of Columbia, led by Director Angie Gates, and the District of Columbia Arts and Humanities Commission, led by Acting Executive Director Haran Sarika Varan. And before we begin, we want to acknowledge that up until now, we've adjudicated and announced performance awards that were labeled for and limited to actor and actresses in a way that was exclusive and harmful to trans, gender nonconforming, and non binary members of our community. So, although this year's awards were adjudicated through a binary lens, we are presenting them in a gender inclusive format, beginning with tonight's awards, which will have two recipients. All 16 performance categories, which were gendered, will be integrated in the same manner. And we apologize for the pain that we've caused up until this year. And we invite you to learn more about how we arrived here and further details about our actions moving forward at theaterwashington.org. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. We would now like to introduce our special guests here, the nominees for Outstanding Lead Performer in a Musical, Helen category. We're going to do a brief round of introductions. Nominees, please tell us your name, your pronouns, the name of the show and theater that you're nominated for. Um, as a way to celebrate first time nominees, please mention if this is your first nomination. And if it's not your first time being nominated, just say one word to describe how you're feeling tonight. Here, I will demonstrate. My name is Sabrina Mandel, she, her, hers, and I am a co-presenter. Um, I'm from Happenstance Theater, and I'm a co-presenter, uh, and I'm feeling excited. And I will pass it on to Glenn Grassdorf. 
Hi, my name is Gwen Grassdorf and my pronouns are she, hers. I am a co-presenter from Happenstance Theater and I'm feeling good. I will throw it over to Mark. Hi folks, my name is Mark Jaster, uh, he, him, his. And um, I am also a co-presenter obviously and uh, I'm feeling um, uh, wild and wooly. Oh, that's two, sorry, I'm only allowed one. Um, and I will now pass it on to Tanya De Leon. My name is Tanya De Leon. Um, she, her, her. We have. Tanya, we're having a little hard time hearing you. Yeah. It's okay. It's it's the mic is a little funky. Just try try one more time. She her hers. Maybe we can come back to you at the end. We'll we'll move on and then we'll try it again. All right, thank you. Um we'll pass it along to Kurt Bohm now. Hi, uh, Kurt Bohm, he, him, his. Uh, I was nominated for Daddy Long Legs at uh, Monumental Theater Company, and this is my first mm -hmm. nomination. Thank you, Kurt. And let's pass it along to Gabriella DeLuca now. Hello, everyone. I'm Gabriella DeLuca, she, her, and I'm nominated for Legally Blonde at the Keegan Theater, and this is my first nomination. Thank you, Gabriella. Let's pass it along now to uh, Juan Luis Espinal. Hey guys, my name is Juan Espinal. Uh, he, him, his. And I was nominated for the production of Fame at Gala Hispanic Theater, and I'm feeling tonight very grateful. Great. Thank you, Juan Luis. Uh, we'll pass it along to Nora Palka now. Hi, everyone. I'm Nora Palka. She, her, hers. I'm nominated for On Air at Creative Cauldron, and this is my first time being nominated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. And let's pass it along to Christian Montgomery now. Hi, I'm Christian Montgomery. Uh, he, him, his. I was nominated for Little Shop of Horrors at Constellation Theater Company, and I'm feeling fabulous. Thank you, Christian. I'll pass it along now to Eleanor Todd. Hi, I'm Eleanor. I am she, her, hers. Um, I was nominated for Beauty and the Beast at Creative Cauldron, and my word for tonight is twinning. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No. Now that has to be my Yeah, word. that has to be your word too now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor. Uh, let's pass it along now to John Ponce. Hello, everyone. I'm John Ponce. I go by he, him, his. And I was nominated for A Christmas Story at Toby Stinger Theater. This is my first nomination for my first professional show. So I'm super excited to be here. Thank you, John. Uh, and now let's pass it to uh, Karen Vincent. Hi, I'm Karen Vincent. She, her, hers. And I was nominated as Piggy in Elephant and Piggy. We are in a play at Adventure Theater. And I feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Uh, and let's pass it now to Jonah Schwartz. Hi, guys. I'm Jonah Schwartz. He, him, his. And I was nominated for Big River at Adventure Theater. And it's my first time being nominated. Congratulations. Thank you, John. And now we'll pass it along to Caroline Wolfson. Hi, I'm Caroline Wolfson. I'm a she, her, hers. And I was nominated for Daddy Long Legs with Monumental. And now I have to say that I am also feeling twinning, even if I had my own word. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> and did we did we get Tanya's sound figured out? I think so. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yay. Yay. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Um, so yeah, go for it. Great. My name's Tanya De Leon. Um, this is the first time I'm nominated for an award with Helen Hayes. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I was nominated for the role of Serena Katz in the U.S. premiere of Fame in Espanol and English. Yay. 
Okay. Um, thank you. We also want to acknowledge our other partners in these projects. First, Chair Interpreted Productions for providing ASL interpretation. Thank you. <laughs> and Creative Video of Washington for providing technical audio and visual coordination. Thank you and welcome all. At this time, we would like to highlight each nominee for Outstanding Lead Performer in a Musical, Helen. In preparing for these calls, we were able to collect highlights either from the biographies of the nominees, but more frequently a tribute from a colleague, a mentor, or a collaborator whom the nominee recommended uh, to speak to their work this past year. So for Tanya, Luis Salgado was the director on this production. They wrote, I am honored to celebrate Tanya. She is transforming daily in front of my eyes. And with Gala, I could not have asked for a better Serena Katz in our bilingual version of fame. This young powerhouse brought her heart and Latinx heritage to the role effortlessly. She is dedicated to every moment of the process while always bringing her contagious energy and laughter to the room. I admire you, Tanya, and can't wait to make more art with you, dear artist, human, and friend. Thank you. <laughs> For Kurt Bohm, uh, Maria Rizzo wrote this, and uh, she is Kurt's wife. Uh, they wrote, my husband makes me proud in so many ways, his work ethic, his leadership, his patience, his passion and compassion. But artistic opportunities come few and far between when someone as special as Kurt can masterfully assert all of these characteristics into a piece of theater. I thought he was done surprising me. I thought someone with a heart like his couldn't grow any bigger to exude so much empathy and love in a piece of storytelling. Thank you for giving your audience this love story and selfishly for giving me ours. I love you. Um, for Gabriella De Luca, Ricky Drummond was the director, uh, director on this production and they wrote, Gabby is a hardworking, talented performer whose work ethic in Legally Blonde inspired the entire company to be so much better. She effortlessly carried the weight of the production on her shoulders, and she exemplified what it meant to be a lead. In addition to her acting skills, Gabby showcased incredible compassion and radiated light each time she entered the room. For Juan Luis Espinal, Luis Salgado was the director on this production, and they wrote, this artist came from the Dominican Republic one day asking us how to walk the path of his dreams in New York City. He came to follow that dream. And since I have watched Juan grow over the many years since he left his hometown to achieve his dreams in theater, it is always a pleasure to work with Juan from the lead role of Usnavi in, in the Heights to the shy pian pianist Shlomo in Fame. I am proud of you, my friend. Keep making your dreams come true. For Nora Palka, Stephen Gregory Smith, the director on that production wrote, when searching for the perfect actress to portray Flora Conrad, the brassy matriarch of the Conrad family in the early 1900s Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it didn't take me too, much, too long to think of Nora Palka. Having witnessed her remarkable talent grow through the past decade, I knew that she would find the perfect blend between Flora's bossy nature and her nurturing heart. The richness of her acting, the warmth of her voice, and her proficiency at dancing around a living room were a joy to watch every single performance. This is for Christian. Um, from Jimmy Mavrikis, who is a friend of Christian's. And they wrote, I've known Christian since his first day at Catholic University about 10 years ago, and I am so proud of the brilliant performer he has become. When casting the role of Michael in Be More Chill, we knew we wanted someone who would make you fall in love with them right away. 
Christian's charm and those insane vocal talents made him perfect for the role. DC is very lucky to have Christian in it, and I am lucky to call him my best friend. <laughs> for Eleanor Todd, Aww. Matt Connor was the director on this production, and they wrote, Ellie Todd's portrayal of Belle in Creative Cauldron's Beauty and the Beast possessed every element of pure honesty and truth. Her brilliant choices, sensitivity to text, and soaring voice added up to a truly stellar star turn performance. Her bell was the toughest yet most frail I have ever seen. Every day that I got to work with her was truly an inspiration to me. Congratulations, Ellie. Oh, thank you. This is for John Ponce from Mark Minnick, who was the associate producer on this production. They wrote, watching John grow as an actor from auditions to his final performance was extremely exciting. He has a true passion for the arts. The future of theater is in good hands if talent like John Ponce continues to blossom. <laughs> this is for Karen. This is Karen Vincent's second Helen Hayes nomination, previously being recognized for Kiss Me Kate at Next Stop Theater Company. She'll next return to Ford's Theater in Guys and Dolls as Sarah Brown, following her appearance in their nominated production of Into the Woods as Cinderella's mother, granny, and the giant. Congratulations, Karen. For Jonah Schwartz, uh, Michael J. Bobbitt is a mentor to Jonah and they wrote, Jonah, who is just a teen, turned out an entertaining, deep, and nuanced performance that made me so proud. He is an incredibly talented young man with a huge and kind heart and a big, shiny Broadway voice. Thrilled that he was also a student in Adventure Theater MTC's Academy. Go Jonah. <laughs> This is for Carolyn. Michael Windsor was the associate producer on this production. They wrote, Carolyn is everything you could ever want in an actor, giving, thoughtful, and willing to try anything. She's a true professional and makes even the most tedious of tech rehearsals entertaining and enjoyable. <laughs> Anyone in DC would be lucky to work with the incomparably talented Carolyn Wolfson. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Congrats. So wonderful to hear about all of the immense skill and creativity that's been on display this year from you all. All right, it is now time to reveal the first recipient of two for this 2020 award. And the first recipient for outstanding lead performer in a musical, Helen, is Nora Palka for On Air, Creative Cauldron. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm in, by myself in my apartment right now. This is very strange, but it's still a tremendous honor to accept this from Theater Washington, my beloved theater community. I'm truly humbled. I'd be remiss not to mention how much of an honor it is to be in this same category alongside my fellow nominees, my dear friends, you are all so talented. You're so smart, such incredible leading performers. And I'm sharing this award with you tonight. This show meant so much to me, not only because it was my first time working in three and a half years, but because of my personal connection to the story. Frank Conrad was a pioneer in radio development. He discovered mass broadcasting by running experiments out of his garage and then he was the driving inspiration and built the first ever radio station for mass broadcasting on top of the Westinghouse building in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> My family roots are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My own grandfather worked at the Westinghouse building in the 1960s and coming from a family of broadcasters along line of history with a family of broadcasters, I still have family to this day that works at KDKA. Uh, the television station, not the radio station. Now more than ever, it's so important that we value the work and the legacy of Frank Conrad and everything that he did to make radio and the media what it is today. This, that, this, we are living in a time when the media is constantly scrutinized and under attack. 
This story brought to light an important part of our history that's not often told. It's not very well known, not by even people in Pittsburgh, and yet it played, it played such a huge role in the way that we Americans receive our news, listen to our music, and all of our media, and it changed the way that we do this for the better. The amount of work put into this project by Stephen Gregory Smith, Matt Connor, Warren Freeman, and everyone at Creative Cauldron was awe-inspiring to me. And there's no way my performance would have gotten this kind of attention if it wasn't for their guidance and the amount of heart, passion, and truth that they brought to this piece. To the point where when Frank Conrad's great-grandson came to see her show, came to see our show, he was floored and completely touched by the way they chose to tell this story. Tonight, I'm accepting this award honoring Flora Conrad, Frank's wife, a suffragist, who undoubtedly was, knew, knew how important it was to keep the public informed on legislation like a woman's right to vote and used her husband's talent to spread the word. With the centennial anniversary of the 19th Amendment having been just last week, I can't help but feel the floor is smiling down, proud that this award can represent a small part of her legacy. I also feel like she's probably a little bit concerned looking down on us saying, you know, we started this fight 100 years ago. What are you doing still fighting it? But don't worry, Flora, we're still hard at work down here and we're not gonna stop anytime soon. I also share this award with the late Jane Pesci Townsend, the greatest teacher that I have ever had. She's been away from this physical earth for now over 10 years, and yet she still continues to bless my life on a consistent basis. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Black lives matter, black trans lives matter. It is unbelievable how much all black lives matter. Vote blue 2020, thank you. Yay! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and now the second. Yeah, let's see here. So uh, as mentioned earlier, the move towards gender inclusive awards means there are two recipients, recipients in this category. So we shall reveal who is the second recipient of the 2020 award from the envelope here. And it is John Ponce for A Christmas Story at Toby's. I'm sorry, that's my dad. Um, I can't believe this. Um, to all the other nominees, you all are so amazing and friendly and I'm honored just to be listed with you guys. Um, thank you to Theater Washington for this crazy night and a uh, shout out to Sophia Manicone and Miss Dawn, Miss Jen, Miss Debbie, Mr. Ben. Uh, all of my teachers at Not Just Dance Center for Ballet Arts and Waples Mill Elementary School for helping me grow as an actor, dancer, and person. Um, thanks to all of my family for their love and support through Thick and Thin, and to the cast and crew of A Christmas Story. You guys are truly some of the nicest people I've ever met, and I will cherish the chapter of my life I got to spend with you. Last but certainly not least, thank you to all of you in the community room for coming out to support everyone. This is absolutely a dream come true, and I can't believe this is actually happening. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Congratulations to all of you nominees. What an amazing group of people. Thank you to everyone for joining us virtually this year to celebrate the nominees for lead performer in a musical, Helen. It's been such a pleasure to be with you in this virtual space when we can't get together in person. It was great to see everyone tonight. Thank you all the nominees for being here uh, and sharing this space with everyone. And we look forward to seeing um, you on September 25th when we have the culminating video and for, and for the additional six nights of individual nominations that are happening over the next two weeks. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye. Congratulations, Bye. everyone. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, community room. Bye, community. Yeah. <laughs>